One of the most fun things about doing an open loop is taking things apart. And that's what we're going to have to do with this GPU, the Radeon 6900. Now, I've already taken the backplate off before. Now we're going to see what's going on the other side. I am the Grain Tech, a gaming insider. If you would like to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. So as you can see, I have the backplate off. This is highly convenient because we would have to put these thermal pads down anyway, so it's already taken care of. I have loosened and removed a lot of the screws so that you don't have to sit here and go through the painful process of seeing somebody unscrew a GPU. But I do have four remaining screws right here. And I did this for a specific reason. This is a cantered levered system, meaning it's designed to put pressure across the bracket itself to hold the GPU itself. This should go all the way through and hold on this massive cooler that AMD has included. I have already loosened it slightly. Each of the four corners are slightly loosed, and now I will do the typical cross pattern to loosen the remaining tension. You want to go one, one to three, three to two, two to four, in order to remove the mechanism that holds this in place. I have also removed this lovely double bracket from AMD. We won't actually use that. I have a custom painted one all ready to go. Now, often one of the most trickiest elements of disassembling a component like this is identifying where things are getting their power from. So you can see right here, we have two cables. Now I'm willing to bet those are powering the fans. There might only be one that's plugged in, there might be more than one. So we have to carefully remove each of those cables. You have to be very careful not to strip out the wires as you're doing so. So I know it's hard to see, but what I'm looking for is a little clip and a bracket that would hold in like this. If I see one of those, I know I have to pop that off first in order to complete the disassembly here. And I think I got it. Cool. All right. Okay. So if everything has been properly removed, the PCB itself should just gingerly lift straight off from the fan assembly. And there we have it. Now normally, <laughs> normally you don't want to flip it like that. That was a total accident on my part. All right, so I'm simply gonna put this in our save corner actually. So let's take a look at what AMD and Radeon have provided us. You can see this massive heat sink. You can see good thermal connectivity going on with all of these various pads. That is solid copper, that is solid copper, and you can see inside copper as well. But this, this feels like a thermal pad, not thermal paste. So let's flip it over and see. Okay. I'm going to say yes, that was thermal pad, which interesting, interesting choices by AMD, I think, with this graphics card. Okay, so I've cleaned it up a little bit so that you can see a little bit more of the PCB itself. A lot of work goes into this to try to make this right. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, put it on a blue paper towel, and gently clean around what you absolutely, positively, 100% do not wanna do is accidentally snag any of these surface mounted devices with that paper towel. You wanna to be very careful using just a little bit between your thumb and index finger in order to clean around. You could use a Q-tip as well. Again, just be careful not to leave any residue or snag. Okay, you can see everything's been cleaned. The thermal pads are in place. There is one thermal pad that is over here on the block. That's simply because I highly recommend that you test fit before you put down your thermal paste. You can see we're just going to flip 
directly like that. And that is what's going to allow us to get things rolling on the installation. What I'm gonna do here in order to work around this extra little thermal paste is just that. We're gonna remove a little bit of excess around the nut there for the coupler. Okay, I did go ahead and put stuff on the chokes and the VRMs themselves. As you can see, we have full coverage. Now that is a little controversial for some folks. There's arguments on the monoblock side, there's arguments on the GPU block side that if you put down thermal pads on top of the chokes themselves, you are going to run into a situation where maybe you don't get the best thermal contact on the actual GPU itself. I've not actually come across that problem in the past, so I am doing it the way that I always have, which is simply put thermal pads down on kind of everything that is generating heat. In order to put this together, we have to add our thermal paste. Again, I'm gonna do a simple X, nothing fancy at all. And then because it's a wide X, I'm gonna put a couple dollops right there. And that's it. I'm not going to argue with people on my pasting. I know it's not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's what a lot of people kind of get hung up about is your pasting doesn't have to be a work of art. It just has to work. Okay, now we have made good contact all around. What I'm checking for right now is just to make sure that the holes themselves are lining up. If everything is lining up proper, then I think I am good to go. This little trick right here can be a little bit annoying. So this is where I'm going to start the overall assembly process. I want to make sure that I have the right orientation for this bracket before I go trying to secure things down and together. And that looks good. So that's actually gonna be my first location that I am going to put a screw down. What I'm checking on right now is just to make sure that there's no screw that is potentially longer than the others. I'm willing to bet that this little nut right here that you probably can't see is what's gonna help hold down this bracket right there. I'm gonna leave that to the side. Now there's, there's instructions that come with these things. Those are long lost at this point, at least for me. You can always pull this stuff down from EKW's website as well. What I'm going to do next is the actual securing process. What you wanna make sure that you are doing is taking the screw, feeding this plastic washer through it, and then gently but force but with enough force to make sure that everything is seated, you're going to screw things down until it grabs. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Now the biggest, trickiest part of all of this is making sure that you are screwing down on the parts that are designed for this part, this kind of front plate, not the back plate. All right, so that's where I stopped recording for that particular day because I ran into this problem. You see, what I didn't account for was the fact that some of the thermal pads that I was putting down were actually too tall. And if you look carefully in the video, you'll actually see the card is starting to bend in order to install into the block itself. So ultimately, I had to take things apart, reassemble them after I changed out the thermal pads that were sitting on top of the memory. Here you can see a photo of that and you can see my pasting. I figured people would enjoy that. In the next video, I start to assemble everything. I get the tubing right, the GPU, the CPU, everything is in place and it's time to start cutting. And when that video posts, you can check it out right there.